Okay, so what I want to do today is just talk about the economics of what's going on in the great state of Texas. So as you know from watching the news, uh, the people of Texas have recently been experiencing some of the coldest temperatures they've ever experienced in their lives. And so we've seen uh, record lows, lots and lots of snow, uh, even ice, all kinds of damages being wrought. So let's just think about this in terms of ordinary supply and demand. Okay, So we probably have a downward sloping demand curve. That makes sense because at lower prices, people are going to want to buy uh, more electricity or use more electricity. And at higher prices, they're probably going to want to use uh, less electricity. We also have an upward sloping supply curve. And that again makes sense uh, because if you think about it, at higher prices, the producers of electricity or any type of power in general are going to be willing to produce uh, more electricity. So we come over from our equilibrium. We have our initial equilibrium price and our initial equilibrium quantity. But with the cold temperatures, people are probably going to be running their heating uh, machines or their heaters uh, a lot more. They might be buying space heaters, uh, anything like that to try to stay warm. Okay, well that's just going to put uh, an increase in demand for electricity in Texas. And so the new equilibrium point uh, should be about here. Okay, and that's going to cause the price of electricity to go up, but it will also cause the quantity of electricity produced to increase as well. But that's not what we saw in Texas. Instead, what we've seen, because their uh, electrical uh, manufacturer, their electrical plants are not insulated to uh, guard against the cold, they've actually frozen. And so what's happened is the ability for Texas power companies to produce electricity or any type of power has actually been reduced. Well, that's an easy thing to show. We simply shift the supply curve to the left. Okay, so now the producers are less able to produce power and we have a new equilibrium point here. Okay, and that's gonna yield an even higher price. Now I've drawn it in this case where the quantity is actually going to decrease. And I think that makes sense given what we've seen uh, in the news, which seems to be that there's less electricity available uh, for all people. And so what we have is an astronomically high price and a reduced quantity. Okay. Now with this, we have a couple options of what we can do. So if we allow the high price to remain, well, that's just going to force people to conserve how much electricity they actually use. So you'll be extra careful, for example, uh, in terms of turning the lights off when you leave a room. You might uh, not charge your cell phone constantly, instead charging it you know, once a day. Uh, maybe you will do other things. Maybe you won't watch as many movies on, on Netflix or anything like that you'll find ways to economize or otherwise use less electricity, again, because the price of the electricity is so much higher. Alternatively, what we can do is we can say, hey, it's, it's not allowed to raise the price. You have to keep the price the same. Well, what that's going to do is it's going to drive a wedge between the amount of electricity that people want to produce, or I'm sorry, the amount that people want to consume and the amount that people actually will produce. Okay, so here we've got the quantity demanded, which is the amount of electricity that people actually want to consume at this price here, is far greater than the quantity supplied. So here, the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. So what do you do in that type of situation? In normal markets, what we would expect is the price to rise. And what, ha what would happen there is we would decrease the quantity demanded, right? And we would increase the quantity supplied. But we don't want to do that. So instead, what ends up happening is we're going to need some form of rationing, okay? Which basically says that, hey, not everyone that wants electricity is going to be able to get it because there's less electricity available. And so what the power companies in Texas have decided to do is use what are called rolling uh, brownouts. Okay, now a rolling brownout 
is basically where we decide uh, which areas are going to get electricity at which time. So the lights might turn on in your house for a little bit of time, and then they would turn back off once it's no longer your neighborhood's turn. Now, uh, obviously there are going to be some exemptions to this. So we might have exemptions for, for example, hospitals, right? Because it would be probably a bad thing if we turned off the power to a hospital, uh, especially when we have people on life support machines or people undergoing surgery, right? If you could imagine the lights turning off in the surgical theater, uh, that would probably be a bad thing. We probably also see, um, uh, what's the word, senior citizen centers uh, or places for long-term care like hospice care, uh, those types of places, those are probably going to be exempted as well. So they'll always have electricity. Some of the other effects of this, so given that we will probably see some exemptions to this rolling brownout, we might see more people from the local community uh, visiting the hospitals and visiting the senior citizen centers because those are the places with power. So if you want to charge your phone, charge your laptop, uh, any of those types of things, you'd probably go to the hospital or the senior citizen center and just hang out in the food court. Or maybe you go visit grandma and grandpa a few extra times. And while you're there, you know, you just plug in your, your devices and charge them up. Okay, so uh, all of this is because rather than let the price rise, we have to come up with some way of rationing the existing amount of electricity because the amount that we have that's available is less than the amount that we actually want to consume at the given price.